Coming up on Roundabout, you will not believe the vehicle one so-called disadvantaged 15-year-old girl is driving to school. Think that organic hamburger you're eating is better for you and the environment? Think again, and our panelists put their skills to the test in another round of Enhance. Roundabout is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $15 off your next purchase, and by everyone's favorite online store, Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. From Roundabout Headquarters in Farmington Hills, Michigan, I'm Aaron Bragman with IHS Automotive. Keeping things on time and on track, I'm your host, Craig Cole. Representing the West Coast, I'm Michelle Naranjo of Autobytel.com. And resisting the urge to snag an iPhone 5, I'm producer Ben Sanders. Take one. And by resisting, he means physical restraints. This is Roundabout. Welcome to Roundabout episode 143, our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news that you may have missed. But probably not. Maybe not. It depends how web savvy they are, I suppose. <laughs> have you ever done opera, Aaron? Because that mm. read was just stupendous. It's my TV voice, Craig. Is it? It is. It's splendid. I don't normally sound like this. What do you normally sound like? I sound like this. Oh, dear. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. So I'll put my TV voice back. Oh, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bad. Put the filter. You too, Craig, could sound like that. I could if I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But Aaron Bragman, IHS Automotive. Bragman. Yes. Thank the you. The pinnacle of automotive analysis, so is what I understand. Well, we like to think so, yes. yes. What are you analyzing <laughs> of late? Anything in particular? Uh, lately, it's the whole Canadian Auto Workers Union mm. deals with the Detroit Three Automakers and what they're trying to negotiate, and their wages, and salaries, and benefits, and contracts, and all kinds of stuff. So if you could boil that down for the audience um, to a haiku mm. for the current situation, what would that be? Well, I can't come up with haiku on the spot. Come on. I'm an animal, we'll not a poet. We'll wait. No, I, I basically, I can, I can sum it up. For, I can, I'm sorry, hmm. sum it up for you, basically, in, in, in kind of a contraction and a word. Okay. Uh, they're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> not in so many words, but no, it's the a uh, contraction and a verb. Uh, yeah, something like that. But the no, the, the union unfortunately is coming to the party. We're not really with a whole lot of ammunition yeah. this time around, and so mm -hmm. it's uh, the contracts they're getting are not as lucrative as they used to be. Mm. Do, 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 and all of their oxen have typhoid, or whatever. Mm, yeah, if Soon have to have oxen, typhoid. Yeah. Uh, also, we cannot forget about our own Michelle Naranjo joining us from Long Beach. There she is. There she That'd is be me. Yes. How you doing, Michelle? How's, how are things in the world of Auto by Tell? Um, it, it's just grand. And you know, I respond better if you say, how you doing, girl? Ben, do you have that queued up? <laughs> I do not. Can you? No, I'm not is it like ask. a Ryan Gosling thing? Like, hey girl, how you doing? How you feeling? It is girl? only from Jeff Ross. Oh, <laughs> with the with the violin with the violin music in the background. <laughs> next time we'll get to it. Next time. So great news! Glad you guys could join us. We've got a big show planned, mm -hmm. and uh, there's other big news in the world right now. iPhone five launches as we record today. What's so if you're not listening live. We'll give you a pass just this once. What's that? What's the iPhone? I frankly don't know. I haven't heard of that. Is it? It's a phone, a handset, from what I understand. Like that, yeah. About, um, I think it's uh, for pirates. I I. Ah. The iPhone. I R phone. Not the R phone. The R phone. Well, I talk like a pirate day was a couple. Days was, ago. Was it two days ago? Something like the nineteenth, I think it was. Something like that. Yeah. Three days. Well, there wasn't even so much talk like a pirate day as it just was just pirate day. Because it seems like we just had a talk like a pirate day, doesn't it? We talk like a Scotsman a, day, or talk a like a year ago. Yeah. Talk, there, there, how come there isn't mm -hmm. anything like that? Like talk There's, like an Australian day. Well, this, yeah. Everybody would be annoyed at that point. That's true, probably. Especially the Australians. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're too fun loving to be annoyed, aren't they? Well, you know, why wouldn't you be? It's just it's <laughs> nice down there. Yeah. It's, there's, of course, well. What seven of the world's most deadliest spiders and snakes? Like that. Yeah, that's that's why I'll never be there. Really, it's just. But it's the land down under, mm. full of wonder. Well, women blowing men chunder, isn't it? <laughs> no, I think that's the lyric actually. Oh. <clears throat> it just sounds mildly inappropriate. Quite a bit mildly inappropriate. Mm -hmm. There's also another important uh, milestone we have to mark, and we're about 
mm, seven days behind on this one. Ben, just, ben, the producer, just informed me uh, this is around about third anniversary. So thank you, Ben. Three years we've been doing this. Hard to believe it's been that long. I don't know about you, but that makes me quite emotional. I'm quite sad. I'm getting all wavery. Weavery? <laughs> Are you Ben? Is that the word for it? Weavery, Weavery. like my voice. I, I, uh, it's got a lot of vibrato. I think I've spent I more time on oh, here yes. than I have <laughs> in traffic <laughs> in California. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh. So. so, shall we do a show? I think that's why we've circled the wagons we this week. Yeah, I suppose so. Let's, so, as we've been doing for the last few weeks, we are uh, bringing you the news. The last three years, in fact. Well, I'm talking about Redline, Ben. Oh, all that. Yes. We're bringing you the news, fast-paced, mm. machine gun style. We've got nine stories to get through. Ben is going to put ten minutes on the clock. That's all we've got to cover these news articles. We're going to bring you the most news we can in the shortest amount of time because we know you are busy. And you don't have time for all the fluff. So, we're going to bring you the news. And are you ready, Aaron? I am. Michelle, are you locked and loaded? I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben, that is a unanimous yes. Put that ten minutes on the clock, and let's get rolling. Oh, that doesn't sound good for the motor. It it's hurts fine. my ears. It's uh, fine. So, first article we got here. <laughs> Huniv Huniv Huniverse. Who what? Is that Dutch? Yes, I think yeah, so. Huniverse. Mr. Huniverse. Huniverse. So, what is the weirdest transmission mechanism you've ever used? Three on the tree. No, Porsche just came out with a seven-speed manual. I would be impressed. That's pretty mm. nice. I'd be impressed if they put it on the column. A seven on the column. Mm. What do you need an alliteration for that? What? Seven on the stock. There you go. There you go. Solved. I gotta Great. Go, I got to go so, find a patent attorney. <laughs> so they're talking about, over the years, there have been various push-button transmissions, mm -hmm. little light. levers, yes. a variety of other things, like the, the Chrysler fluid drive, like semi-automatic transmissions. Mm -hmm. You'd use the clutch to get going or mm -hmm. go to reverse, but then it could, you could take off in high gear, a la an automatic, and yes. terribly slow. So I was thinking, what are some of the strangest transmissions that are out on the market? Uh, you've got you know, manual or automatic, but... Yeah. Well, have you ever driven a Smart for two? That, I didn't say <laughs> awful as strange. Ah, okay. Well, it's, it's pretty damn strange. Yes, it's, it is. It's strangely it's... terrible. Yeah. CVT. CVT. Well, they're of not course. strange anymore. But I mean. there are different kinds of CVTs. Yeah, there's, there's one. the good kinds and the bad kinds. Well, there's the toroidal. Toroidal. Tor toroidal. The, the Nissan x mm -hmm. CVT, which actually uses machined parts opposed to a pulley. It sounds like you need a cream for that, though. A horrendous... Yeah. You may. A oh, he's got the common, you've got yeah. oh, You've got CVT syndrome, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. So, yes, highly machined parts, expensive, but another way to skin the cat, so mm. to speak. Two-minute mark. There, we'd better get going, then. Mm. Michelle, smart. Yeah, you're wasting time here, I'm dude. sorry. Cut me off. Cut me off. I think I did Cut too. my mic. Mm. Michelle. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I have... I'm not a smart fan, but... <laughs> if we get done berating it. <laughs> going from really? smart to smart, yeah. the smart four stars concept that's being shown at the Paris Auto Show has a little quality that I kind of want as a homeowner. It has a um, hood-mounted cinema projector, so you could just pull it right up and project a movie on through your smartphone, streaming music through the speakers mounted in the doors, to your garage door. So I love this idea. So they basically figured that the thing isn't any good as a car. Maybe it's okay as a video projector? Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, hell, why not? Yeah. The Smart for Two basically handles like a video projector. <laughs> it's it kind uglier of does. than one. It's about as fast, too. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know what? It. I mean, the thing, the, the thing is, wow. is video projectors, because I have been pricing them over the years, they are going down tremendously in, in price. So I don't think this was a hugely expensive thing other than the self, the yeah. smartphone integration you see, for the, the car, put on the car, and it's just kind of fun. Well, what's getting kind of lost in this thing is that the car actually is, it's an EV, mm -hmm. and it's got a 17 kilowatt battery in it, which mm -hmm. is not decent. inconsiderable. I mean, that's a decent size, I don't think it's decent, I didn't look mm -hmm. at mine, probably have it. But still, I mean, it's so it's got wrong. a decent sized battery in it, and it may actually be interesting to drive. But mm -hmm. It's like a little Tonka toy. The it has a little rubber uh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, oh, hold on, guys. Speaking of interesting to drive, if mm. it's got a, a snake on it, Shelby, chances are it's pretty good. Aaron, that well, ties in with your article. Yes. Unfortunately, when we're talking about Shelbys, this is not the kind of Shelby that we consider as a, as a, as a Shelby, like a Cobra Mustang, anything like that. This is a Shelby Charger pickup 
prototype that <laughs> apparently was made back uh, for Chrysler in, uh, in the early 80s, I believe it was. Yeah. And it's based on the, uh, the Omni Simca platform. Remember the Dodge Omni, the, the only one of which that was worth anything was the GLH model, the Goes Like Hell model. Uh, they thought they'd lost it to some designer who'd picked it out of a showroom or picked it out of the... Um, snagged it. Yeah, snagged it out of a design shop. And Went instead they found it... trawling and snagged it. Yeah, somebody it, or right? some designer who got fired from Chrysler for whatever reason, you know, picked it up and put it in a suitcase to go with them. But no, they found it in a California junkyard huh. where it's been baking in the sun. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, frankly, given what I've ever experienced with it's Dodge Rampages and whatnot, they, they, should, scamp. they should just leave it there. <laughs> Even though it's a Shelby. Yeah, it's, it, well. Yeah, I agree. Next story, <laughs> which would be me. So, a 15-year-old girl, according to this article on Jalapnik, driving a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Gallardo? Or is it the Gallardo? Gallardo. Gallardo. Yeah, the fat guy's version, yeah. <laughs> the LP574. That's nice. Super Trofeo Stradale. Stradal. Stradale. Is one of the rarest Gallardos ever built. There are only 150 of them in the world, and this chick is driving it to high school Why? in Texas. Why? Of all places. This is like an oil baron's daughter? Yeah. And apparently, she has a driver's license that are for disadvantaged people. So you figure, Aaron, does that make your blood boil? She I has don't the, even know what to make of it. A hardship just, license. How, how Hardship how? Like, she only has one leg? Or, she, or just... She's, well, her defense, roughly 80% of the kids in her class got hardship licenses because of the recent change, so you can get it a year younger. She wanted to... Oh, I see, I see. So she has to basically work to support the family, yes. so she has a license at 15 instead of 16, as is, like, normal people. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Well, that explains the Lamborghini, then. It seems like a terrible idea to give a, a, a teenager a car that... It's a terrible idea to give almost anyone that car. I mean, quite frankly, <laughs> yeah. it's going to end up in yeah. a pile on the side of the road in flames because that's how that happens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. So, I don't know. Roundaboutshow.com. Follow the show notes for mm. all the info if your stomach can handle it. Next, Michelle. More smarts. Another smart. Is this the 412? It, it is the 412. And you know what? When I saw the headline in the rundown, I thought that it was going to be about the new smart commercial where they have like different big, huge pickups or whatever balancing on top of the frame to show how strong it is. I love this. These people, instead of towing oh, a car behind oh their God. RV, they have their RV towing behind this super duty pickup Extended. and they're smart it's in the bed. Doors. It's got six doors. On each side, it's cool. How would you get this out? I'm not sure. They don't seem to have a crane. Well, unless we, always, we always joked that you could put a 412 in the back of a pickup and just take it with you, and they did it. They did. That's insane and brilliant. You must only... have little ramplets you can drive up there. The thing is, though, right. wouldn't a Fiat 500 be more fun? Isn't the Cinquecento a much better car? Mm. Answer, yes. Yeah, well. Speaking of better cars, yeah. mm. there's a little outfit out West, yes. Michelle territory, a little yes. further north. Where you're, you're at out there. Uh, the, the test smart, I almost said smart. Tesla Model S has added a creep function. So which, it can hang out at playgrounds <laughs> and wear leather jackets? Yeah, it, it, you, despite what you might think, it has nothing to do with the actual owners. <laughs> it, it instead is, uh, of course, I don't know any Model S owners. I'm sure they're all upstanding, wonderful people. Mm-hmm. But it has to do with transmissions and how transmissions work. You know, in your, your automatic transmission car, you put it in D, you let your foot off the gas. And it creeps. And it creeps, or off the brake, and it, it creeps forward through, through traffic. EVs don't do that, apparently. And so they, by popular demand of Model S owners, They've done a software flash, apparently. I don't know if it was delivered wirelessly like my, like my, my iPhone uh, iOS 6 did. Ooh. Probably to plug it into something. Yes. And now it has a creep function. So you take your foot off the brake, and the Model S will creep forward nicely, slowly, and advance you through traffic. Very convenient. And I'm glad they're thinking about their customers in the yes. process. Somebody is, yes. Who is next? The Hyundai Hypermatrix presentation will blow your mind, at least according to Zach Bowman on the Autumn web blog. This is a, I'm not certain, entirely certain what it's for, but it's a mechanized video display screen of sorts that does some absolutely crazy things. What the hell? Ben, you're playing that video up on the really? monitor there. It's like synchronized little foam. It's really good for boxes. a podcast. It's it like, is. Look it's at like that. life-sized 8-bit projection game yes. kind of thing. You could play like a side-scroller like game. It would Mario. be sweet. Yeah. Oh, my God. It'd be 30 oh. feet tall. That'd be awesome. Oh, It's magical. Where is this? It is in Korea, I believe. Oh, that makes sense. The result is a massive creation called the Hyper Matrix, 
which can double as a projector screen. These blocks are each uh, computer controlled and they have actuator so they can slide in or out. It's like a giant wall, basically, made of cubes. So it's like that little design. thing with the pens that Henry and I stick on our faces and it like molds to your exactly. face. Exactly, yeah. yes. Good Hyundai. analogy. Hyundai Motogroup. Hi. Cool, we got one minute left. I really yeah, do want to play time. Mario on this. That'd be All right, the one, up, you know, this is probably the most important story of the entire thing here because uh, some study out of UC Riverside, also not far from you, I believe, Michelle, um, has determined that the emissions created, the particulate emissions created from charbroiling one beef hamburger are greater than that of an 18-wheeler diesel truck, a Class an 8 diesel 18 truck. An 18-wheeler? Yeah. They said that an 18-wheeler would have to drive 143 miles to, because the new clean diesels are so good to equal the particulate emissions of one dirty, nasty, disgusting beef burger. Are they taking into account all of the cows urinating and defecating on the planet and all of the trucking of materials to get them, like, foodstuffs? Is I that part of the equation? Emissions. No, it's just particulate emissions from you actually barbecuing. I don't understand how Ooh. that could possibly be. Well, particulate emissions is one slice of the emissions pie. And I wonder, is this charcoal grill? I want a piece of emissions grill? pie. Because <laughs> this is gas grill, meaning all the particulate emissions <laughs> off the burger? Excuse me. <laughs> that, oh, that means our thing, time right, is yeah. up. But we've got one story left. Mm. I think we'll wrap it up and then move on. But yes, hard to believe it. I mean, when you're burning wood I, or something, yeah. charcoal, for instance, you're going to get. I could see. You're going to get the smoke and the uh, the. But you're going to tell me grilling a gas grill at a burger is going to make more particulate emissions than 143 miles in a Class Eight diesel tractor? Bull You've roar. never seen me barbecue. I, 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 I. Maybe it's all the lighter I fluid. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And what even happened? if it was true. Uh, I'm not giving up burgers. <laughs> They're too good. No. Michelle, what are you saying about barbecue? I said, you've never seen me barbecue. <laughs> not pretty. No, That's what that look says on Michelle's oh, face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Long Beach Fire Department. Added. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness they're only three doors down and they're always out in front washing the truck. It's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's why Michelle they're always ready. walks down to get a uh-huh. pop at the corner yeah. store. Get she passes a cold the, pop. Mm-hmm. the um, firehouse. They're cute. Anyway, you can grill pork. It's one of the, the primary meats. You can grill that on a, a grill. So that ties in with the next article, Michelle, the last one as well. Mm. Right. You can grill pork, and which is pig. <laughs> and, of course, in one... Uh, in Texas, it, it had to have happened in Texas, um, a guy got a $137 ticket, and so he paid it to the police in two donut boxes that he had put 137 origami pigs made out of dollar bills. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. You know, there's a word for these kind of people. D- like, douchebag. I just, douchebag. It's yeah. exactly the word I was thinking of, yes. Here's that parking ticket I owe you. Yeah. And That's a lot of talent. You're sticking it to the man. Of, of, yeah. yeah, I'm going to screw you guys because you're, you're the cops, right? Exactly. That'll, that'll wait At least you can like, go pay them in pennies. That's yeah. boring. But you know what's even worse is the tease. Is the tease of handing them a Dunkin' Donuts box <laughs> at, the, at the police station <laughs> and then opening it up and finding some idiots put you know, origami pigs in there instead of actual Those you know, are not blades. a food stuff that will soak through the wrapper, origami pigs no. made of money. No, depends on you cook. The guy in the city at the counter, like, the He's like, are you freaking like, serious? Are you honestly going to do this? Just get out of here. Douche, I'm going to call the sergeant over <laughs> here and he's going to beat you with a nightstick or something. Yeah, something with a nightstick. You know, there's a sergeant. He's Uh-oh. like, you're an idiot. Yeah, no, I don't here. know like, about that. Nah, nope, I don't think nope. we're going to accept that. Good job there, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go there, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> the many voices of Aaron Bragg. Uh, yeah. You have to give us a sample, a little scrampling at the end. Oh, sure. Yeah. But that's the news portion, portion of the show. We made it in 10 minutes-ish. Ish. Close. Ten Kept minutes us ish. the 10 minutes. Ish. It's it was, my fault. It was really. 10 minutes metric. There you go. Yes. It is my fault for dragging the first story. Worked. Apology accepted. Moving along. Car companies try to prevent them. Freelancers try to sell them. And enthusiasts gobble them up. Mm. What am I talking about? Well, spy photos, of course. They're a big mm. part of the automotive business. And in this next little featurette, we take a look at the latest sneaky snaps to hit the cyber web. So, <laughs> Dramatic gas Ben in the control room. Did he just have an attack of some kind? Or Asthma. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Lexus. <laughs> Usually when you hear that over speakers, it's something else entirely. Oh, dear. Right? Lexus LFCC <laughs> hybrid coupe mm. concept breaks cover 
breaks water ahead of Paris Motor Show. Are we talking about Paris stuff now? Because yes. from Paris, hey, I got something for that. Oh? Yeah, because I'm not this going is to one Paris. Paris so <laughs> for going to Paris, I have to look appropriate. He's busted out a red beret with a little, uh, what's the thing in the back, a little ribbon? I don't know. Tail? Yes. Is that a genuine French beret? No, actually. Frankreich? No, no, it's no. not. It's, it's, it's a military surplus, but still, oh, it's the only enough, beret I had, so, so yeah. So you and I, uh, we can, have been surrendered we can anyway. talk, now you can talk Paris auto shit. Okay. Right? I have something for Paris as well. Oh, let's. <laughs> 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 I thought that was a pregnancy test thing for a second there until I saw what it was. I'm like, what did you get in Paris? <laughs> oh, my dear. She is talking a pet of It was like Galois. She was smoking the Galois. Is that what they're called? Oh, that's the brand. I don't know. Is that the really cheap one that are small or they're something yellow, that smell actually. bad? Yeah, they're yellow. They're French brands. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Mm. Lexus LFL CC. LFCC. Why can't they just name the thing a name? This is a concept car with a 2.5 liter full hybrid powertrain that will soon be introduced into the Lexus model lineup. It is a rather that's decent a, looking that, car. That is not unattractive. It reminds me of a one series a bit. But that's, that's that swoopy swoop thing on yeah. the side there, yeah. The front end is obviously the LF um, A. It's got that hourglass. That's the best view. That's nice. the best the back. view. The rear Describe for the listeners what we're seeing here. It's uh, a car and there's wheels. They're, they're round and, <laughs> and the thing is generally car shaped. There's doors on either side. Yes. Um, there's a trunk in the back mm -mm. with uh, lights. The, the, the back lights are red. Um, can you be a little more... I'm not a designer. I'm an analyst. Yeah, see, <laughs> analyze it, then. <laughs> actually, it looks pretty good. It is I'm a good actually, I'm, I'm impressed by this in ways that Acura does, does nothing for me. This is actually really very good. If the actual car... This is obviously looks like the new IS to me. Yeah, that, uh, to that spindle grill, as they call it, which I don't really understand the name. It is truly a waterfall grill. I mean, that is like... It's not Niagara Falls. Big grill. That makes some of the Audi it's, grills look restrained, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yep. that, that rear three quarters is the best view. I really hope, I, I do hope that they bring this to market as as this and don't tone it down too much because this could give the G, the G37, uh, a run for the money. Yeah, not yeah. an unattractive car, but no. moving along, mm. we have Le Scoop. Le Scoop. The new Renault Capture yeah. small crossover is going to come out based on the Nissan Juke. Mm. And we have a spy photograph coming to us courtesy of carscoop.blogspot.com. You know, if all Nissan Jukes could look like that, you'd be all right. The Juke drives very well. Wrapped up it in It just camo. looks like it does. <laughs> you know, if, yes, I, I will admit that the Juke is actually a lot of fun to drive. The best place to experience a Juke is from the inside it. But uh, Not otherwise, for others, it, otherwise it looks like an angry Pokemon to me. <laughs> or Chin Pokemon. Yeah. I like it. Do you like the looks of it, Michelle? Really? It's distinctive. Yeah, I actually like the outside better than I like the inside. Really? I think all that exposed, like, body-colored metal on the inside yeah, is just going to look scratched and nasty soon. <laughs> See, to me, it looks like a sport bike, which is what they were going for, like a sport bike tank on the inside. Mm -hmm. But what mm. we're looking at here is mm. the Renault version. Le Not much capture. to see. It's wrapped in camouflage, but it's obviously toned down mm -hmm. from the Juke. Which is odd, considering Renault French styling usually is the other way around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's some weird body lines on that thing, though. The Look back the haunches. haunches. Yeah. yeah. Some bristle on the haunches. We'll see. And those, the, the latest fad everybody's doing, and I hate it. Look at the size of that badge. Are the mm. side view mirrors on the little posts. I just don't like that. Really? Look, well, it's no. good for it, it's the, good the for Fusion arrow. is the first car I've seen that actually does it, and I, I can tolerate it. So you mean the dental mirror? Yes. <laughs> you see, it's That's well, a great that, description. It's, yes. it, it, there's a couple reasons for it. Yes. Though. I mean, it's good for aero, mm -hmm. for one thing. It also maximizes your side visibility because there's no little little black quarter mm -hmm. panel in your window. And it's uh, good for noise. Mm -hmm. There's no NVH that just transmits. So and the I other thing I heard, well, you know, they keep raking the windshields back yeah. farther and farther. So you've got to move that further mm -hmm. forward. And you get these little side windows up front, which I don't like either. Ah. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Tish tosh. Sorry. Sorry. Fish. Sorry. Next up. We talked about this vehicle last week, the Chevrolet Corvette C7. We got another, we've got a spy shot of it now coming mm. from the Automotive Web blog and written by our good friend Jefferson Ross. Mm. Not much to see here, car wrapped in camo, but gives you a potential peek at the next gen vet. Where they took Jeff who? Jefferson Ross and KGP Spy Photography. I don't know where they took those pictures, but it's lovely. Yes. <laughs> it looked it's, alpine almost. It's for a minute. Michigan in the summertime. Uh, I don't think that's here. <laughs> Shut up, Aaron. Do you want to sell it? Oh, okay, right. Pure Michigan. <laughs> Pure Michigan. 
So a lot of Corvette cues here, flat Ooh. butt. Nice yep. sharp edge, yep, yep, little low front end. dental mirrors, I which actually, don't look that, bad on the Corvette. That looks almost exactly like the current Corvette from the profile. It probably is. It really does. I had much. one last night, actually. I had a uh, Corvette <coughs> C6 Grand Sport convertible for the last couple of So you had a one-night stand? Plenty fast. Kind of, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's so it still feels so ancient inside, but it is still a lot of fun to drive. Even the, Just the straight-up base Corvette with an automatic transmission yeah. is terrifyingly fast. Yeah, yeah. Terrifying. Terrifyingly. It's Good inappropriately fast. Look how smaller it is than that Camaro. Camaro. Yeah. Anyway, last but not least, we have a bonus in the iSpy section. Oh. One, a vehicle leaked by the OEM, a Jaguar F-Type. Ah, Jaguar. I like this one because I thought the podcast people would love this because it's nice sound. What's the sound? There's a sound. Can you play the video, Ben. He's a Brit, and he's yammering about the car. No, you have to start at the beginning when they start it up. Bull roar. Ooh. Listen to that. That's six? Must be. Yeah. Sounds an octave too high. Yeah. Ooh. Gilai. That's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah. What do we see in here, guys? Besides a... The JLR test facility in Gaydon. Hmm. And the car, yep. covered in camouflage. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. That's what it sounds like. It's almost vaguely VR6-like. Yeah. Oh, Ryan Motazet. It does, yeah. Sure. We've got something pretty special. It's Bad. our first true sports car for a long time. That's the best sounding you have Indian car I've ever heard. <laughs> You've never driven the Nano, though, <laughs> right? have you? I've not, no. It I like have. A that actually sounds like they put a bunch of Nanos in a blender. And Nano actually, is terrifying. Yeah. So. Have you really? Yeah. In Germany, of all places. Do I look like I'd fit in a Nano? <laughs> it was pretty... Sp it, was not, it was clever. It was fun to drive it, and it was impressively that they delivered that for the mm. price. So, yeah, you can have a Nano. I need a macro. <laughs> So that is I Spy. We've got one more demi section before we take a break here. It's called Buy Stuff Now. Mm. Buy Stuff Now! Voiced by our own Eric Tritko. Mm. First up, we've got the Jawa Powered 1967 Velarex 16350. Jawa? Wow. This is awesome. It's, it, is it covered in leather? It's a leather-clad it's like it's French pleather. Velomobile, apparently. It's like covered oh in pleather. God. I want it. You gotta take. You gotta show a picture of that. It's, it's a, a motorcycle. No, it's a trike. A tri yeah. trike. Trike cycle. Tri tri tricycle. Tricycle. Yes. Thirteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars for a sale in Van Nuys, California. There Bringatrailer dot com. Bring Look at that thing. I mean, leather wrapped it, body. Coach I don't worth. think it's leather. It's some kind of pleathery vinyl kind of thing. But still, when you look at the structure underneath that front end. The fuel tank is in your lap, literally, and the dro the passenger rests their feet on the battery. There you go, on the battery. Yeah. Now, with Aaron, the open. Aaron, I is mean, there a better place for a fuel tank than in my lap? Yeah, I can think of a few better places. <laughs> <laughs> the back end is the is the best. It's though. a single motorcycle wheel. You drive wheel. Mm, the back. wheel. Mm -hmm. The wheel. This I love this car. This is awesome. I like the red leather interior. There's a whole class of French cars for older, designed for older folks that like live in the countryside. Mm. They're like very, very small, like this. And I don't know the name. I, maybe you're familiar. It's basically they don't live close enough to public transit, so they're allowed to drive these oh, tiny yes, things. Oh yes, they are called um, a merd, I believe. A merd. Yes. <laughs> How do you spell that? Uh, M e r d e. <clears throat> it, mean crap? Oh, yeah. mm. it might mean crap. Yes, mm, it might. <laughs> no. Yes, not a proper automobile. That that's just. I mean, if it's cheap, gets you around, and I can I can respect that. But yeah, yuck. Honestly, but, yeah. but honest. Moving along, 1963 New York Auto Show car, barn find. It is the Porsche 356B. B. Plan B. Plan B. It's available on. Ebay in Deering, New Hampshire, adjacent to the old Hampshire. Kind of looks like it's seen better days. That's restorable. Is it? It's adorably restorable. It hasn't any wheels. Who needs wheels? Yeah, it's it's like buying a camera, right, Michelle? Right. You don't need wheels. Right. Yeah. Let's you see can just the... sit and like, pretend like you have a radio. It would make a good planter, I suppose, for your yard. Starting bid is 99 cents. Yeah. Aaron, 
It could be yours. You could be tooling around Ann Arbor in no time. Well, wait, I, 99 cents for that and probably like $5,000 per wheel. Per wheel, per wheel. <coughs> potentially. Yeah. Steering wheel not included. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be another five. Yeah. So, amazing piece of historical Quite. history. <laughs> would you have it, Craigie? I would if I had space and time and money. Mm. It would be that in my That could be your 40th birthday project. Yes. Mm. 30 is my goal to have the 36 done. There you go. So, there um, you go. Check more? it out, roundaboutshow.com. You can find all of these juicy links and a whole lot more. Reserve not that. There you go. Well, 99 cents. What was there? 42 cents? Yeah, reserve? someone's been a quarter by yes. now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, stick around. We've got our blind spot story of the week coming up next. We're also going to play Enhance, where it is our job to guess vehicles based off of distorted images. It's a lot of fun, so you got to stick around for that. That's the meat and potatoes of the show. You've sat through the news. Who cares about that? Yeah. We're coming up to Enhance. It's good stuff. But right now, got to talk about our friends at Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com. If you go there, you'll look on the right-hand sidebar of the page. You will see a small advertisement for Advance. And what we want you to do is go ahead and click on that ad. It's going to take you to the Advance store, uh, storefront. You can do your shopping for auto parts as you normally would. You can buy all kinds of stuff from wiper blades to brake pads, brake master cylinder, gear, whatever, you name it, they've got it. You do your shopping as you normally would. When you go to checkout, there's a promo code listed on our website right below the ad. What this is, is very important. Yeah. When you're checking out, you punch that promo code in. And that is your ticket, Aaron, to major monetary savings. Big time savings. Yes. Here, here's what it is. If you spend $30 with Advance, yeah. we're giving you the opportunity, and that you're still wearing that hat, yeah. we're giving you the opportunity to, spend, to save 10 bucks. If you hit $50, mm -hmm. you can take $20 off the top of your order. Aaron and Michelle, 30. you can, you yeah, can participate okay. as well. If you hit $100, you could save up to 30 bucks on that order. How can you do that? The savings quintuple pie. How can you do that? As you, it's called value, and it's called advanced cares about the roundabout It's science, fan base. Aaron. I don't know if you've ever heard of this that's since you're a Republican, insane. but a, yes, he's wearing I'm, a red beret. <laughs> such a, that's my red state Republican yes. beret. Are you kidding me? A Republican wouldn't touch a beret <laughs> unless to smack it off some French guy's head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're in America. Take off that dang commie hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yes, again, roundaboutshow.com, click on the advance ad on the right-hand sidebar of the page. If you're watching the video, it would be the right-hand sidebar of the page. It's your ticket to savings. When you check out, you can save $10 on an order of $30, $20 off of an order of $50, or $30 off $100. It is a great value. I've taken advantage of this on a number of occasions, have as you, have many others. What have you purchased? All kinds of stuff for the, the focus. Ah. I, no, I'm serious. I bought yeah. a timing belt kit I got on there. I think I purchased a serpentine belt as well when I was in there doing the timing kit. Nice. And all kinds of brake pads. It's a steal. And also, if you hit $75 on your order, and here's mm -hmm. where it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. You hit $75, you qualify for free shipping. They will deliver your order anywhere you want free of charge because they're nice folks at Advance Auto Parts. What if I want it on the porch? They'll do that too. Will they do that? Yeah. That's awesome. Of course, if you don't hit $75 and you live near in advance, that's not a problem. You can have it shipped to any store in, of your choice and pick it up right from there. So if you're two um, blocks away. <coughs> what? If you're two blocks away from in advance, <laughs> there is a bit of a okay? crisis here. <laughs> if you're two blocks away from in advance, you can walk there, get your parts, and walk home and not have to worry about shipping. Well, you it's a great deal. You probably couldn't drive there because your car's not working, which is why you've ordered parts. Unless you've had a press vehicle. Oh, true. Yeah. But how many people get that? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of auto journalists. There are, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> so, Advance Auto Parts, we thank them for their support of Roundabout Show, and we do hope you'll take advantage of this amazing deal. Advance. That's a bargain. It is. And with that, it is time for our Blind Spot Story of the Week. When news topics go unnoticed, are underreported, or otherwise fall off the radar, they land in our Blind Spot. This week, we are talking all about fuel economy myths. We're going Mythbusters style. We're debunking this flimflammery, if you will. So... Aaron's taking his hat off because it's serious time it now. It is now, yes. You can follow that link. He's no longer French. No longer French. Oh, sacre bleu. He's, uh, it's, 
1871, they just lost the Franco-Prussian War. And now the Rhineland, no, uh, pardon me, it was um, Alsace-Lorraine has been ceded to the Germans. They make, so, good, they make good cheese there. Do they? They do. Where does Munster come from? That's one of my favorites. Germany. Does it? Munster. Mm. I thought it was a French mm -hmm. cheese. I don't believe so. Anyway, <laughs> fuel economy myths courtesy of Yahoo. Mm. <laughs> Who would trust that? I don't know. First one on the list, a dirty air filter drops your mileage. You hear that one a lot. Mm. Is it true, though? Apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently not. They're, they're saying that it's, it's not so much the dirty air filter that drops the mileage because the new modern engines mm -hmm. can cope with well, reducing the, the amount of fuel. Exactly. They're always adjusting the air fuel ratio. Right. So if you're getting less air, they can automatically compensate. Now it's going to cut your power output yeah. because you're not slowing the air in there and you need to. Yeah, but so you still need to clean the filter. You can order a filter from Advanced Auto Parts and have it know, delivered right there. You should order one. Yes. You probably need one. Quit procrastinating. Go to Advan Go to roundaboutshow.com. Get the spark plugs, too, while you're at it. Moyers. Why not? Yep. So, dirty air filter. If mm -hmm. it's a carbureted engine, I could see where that would be an issue. Old yeah. school style, yeah. vacuum operated, mm -hmm. everything. But modern, not so much. No. Warming up before driving. Michelle, this isn't a problem for you in Southern California. It's toasty warm. I heard 87 degrees. <laughs> yeah, not generally. I mean, it can get a little chilly in the winter, but then it's not really that chilly. We don't have to have remote starts for example. <laughs> well, no, your remote, your remote starts to turn on the AC so that you're not boiling when you get in the car. Right, right. there's that. But uh, warming up is also a myth, a myth. You don't need to do that in a modern car, apparently, because the engines are most efficient when they're at operating temperature, and to, the fastest way to get them up to operating temperature is to drive them, rather than leaving it idling in the driveway. See, well, not many that. of us have chokes on our cars any <laughs> longer true. either. <laughs> well, I have, the thing is, though, the warming up before driving, I always thought was to get the cats up to the mm -hmm. catalytic converters up to operating temperature. Perhaps. So those also don't operate well until you're actually, but again, driving will make them operate well. Mm -hmm. However, that first few you know, miles or minutes or however you're operating, it's very dirty. So I'm not necessarily on board with that one mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Well, if you're driving Sorry, it, you're going to heat it up quicker. Reports, but, you know. <laughs> if you're driving it, you're going to heat it up quicker than just idling. Yeah, but you're driving and it's not as hot and you're going to be blowing a lot of crap out that the cats aren't taking care of. And See that's what I'm a problem? Yeah, well, not for me. I don't know. Well, at least so you, you could be grilling a hamburger and exactly. making even more emissions. It, it could be worse. You could be yes. grilling hamburgers. Yes. And if so you're why is it some cars, the air conditioners don't start moving till you, it don't, doesn't start working till you start moving? What cars? Have you ever noticed that? No, My Kia does that. Like, the faster you drive, the better the air conditioner works. Oh. Well, that's because of the power take off from the yeah. compressor. Yeah. 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 Hmm. No name gas stations offer lower quality fuel. This is apparently another. So if you're going to the Admiral Station or yeah. the Come and Go or something, mm -hmm. some random places you haven't heard of before. Come and Go. It's a real one. I know. We saw those in, yeah. on our road trip. The best was the Sinclair with the big dinosaur. fiberglass dinosaur. That's just like truth in advertising right there. Uh -huh. Come some dinosaur juice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So apparently everybody buys the fuel from the same place, and mm. the, the, the cheap guys often get it from the whole oil fuel transportation network in the United States is shared, isn't it? So yeah. the product is basically the same on one end. Or the the other. only thing that might be different is you might not have like the, the Amico or the BP the additives. additives, but yeah. you know, those are all dubious use to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of dubious, premium fuel is always best. Mm. <laughs> Wrong. No. If your car doesn't have the compression ratio to right. take advantage of the additional octane, you're not doing any good. Yep. I still am putting premium in mind because it said to. Exactly. Well, that's probably you're good. supposed to. Yeah. If it says to do it, you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if it doesn't say to do it, you don't do it. Now, if you're driving, let's say a Buick GNX that mm. requires premium, and you put regular in, yeah, bad, bad idea, jeans. Bad. Yeah. Bad. From what I understand, octane is a fuel's resistance to knocking or yes. igniting under pressure. So pre-ignition. Yes. yes. So which could damage. And 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 a higher octane fuel actually burns more slowly, from what I understand, than a. Lower octane fuel allows you to advance the spark timing. Sure. Boom. Yes. Driving with the windows open hurts fuel economy. Now, I'm, a, I'm guilty of this. I drive with the windows down all the time in the summertime. I don't mm -hmm. like to use the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. But you'll use cruise control. <laughs> the, idea here, yeah, the idea here is that you know, you're mm -hmm. disrupting the vehicle's aerodynamics and causing drag. And again, I'm not necessarily on board with this one mm -hmm. because the operating the, the air conditioning at 65, I can't imagine really it does much in terms of taking additional power away when the engine's already ticking over at 3,000 RPM potentially. 
depending on what kind of engine you're using. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, gear, but gear. the additional drag at that speed is quite significant. Well, it's the kind of the same theory that they say in pickups. If you put the tailgate down, it right. actually affects the fuel economy as well. And everybody, I don't know. It's it. They say it affects it. Affects it. It I, probably I, does, but it's so small you can't even measure it. I, well, well, is, exactly. I, it actually is pretty significant, and the, it's actually worse when you put the tailgate down. Mm -hmm. Because when you leave the tailgate up, it creates a vortex in the actual bed, and the air slides over. over that vortex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or as they, didn't they on the Ram, I didn't hear it very clearly, Ben, but last night we had the Ram truck guy, head engineer, in studio here for After Hours, and yeah, he was talking so. about tonneau covers, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, how they're the best for aero. Yeah, mm -hmm. he said, if you want to get the best fuel economy, leave that tonneau cover on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last item on the list here from Yahoo, tires with low rolling resistance are always a smart choice. Now, I have a problem there always. If you're going on a track with a track car, you're not going to want skinny fuel economy tires. No. And they're noisy. Yeah, and they're noisy. They don't and they don't, they don't grip. And if you're, you're in any kind of wet conditions or icy or snowy. You're screwed. You want something with, with traction. You want bear claws traction, on all four you know, Traction is friction. And if you reduce that friction, you reduce that traction. Bull roar is what I say. you might die. Well, plus, you know, a lot of performance cars have very wide tires, and that's a yes. lot of wind resistance right there. there so you go. go with the skin that you get a bicycle tire. Boom. Problem solved. Ten more miles per gallon. You know, this is why everybody should be driving Model T. Exactly. exactly. I, I won't argue with that. The top speed about 40 miles an hour, 40 maybe. 40 miles an hour. They got, like, some re decent fuel economy for the they time, did. I think, yeah. 20 horsepower? Yeah. Ish. A little windy. You know, a little windy. A little breezy. Yeah. But they were they could go up like cliffs and stuff. Uh, they crossed the country before there were roads. Yes, they did. <laughs> absolutely. Like some cross country yeah. race or something. I forget yeah. what it was, like 1910. Oh or my something. god, I can't imagine. Yeah, could you could you think take weeks to do that and you're just exposed? Yeah. To the elements. Yes. Goodness. And if you break Goodness down. Goodness gracious. Driving Craig. over the Rockies before there was any way to drive over the Rockies. How do you do that? <laughs> like, no, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that yeah. is our article from Yahoo.com, and we hope. We have educated you, the, the loyal roundabout enthusiast. The roundabout fan gives back. We do. Can we get a level up, Ben? A self congratulatory level up? <laughs> you see what you I feel there? better already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it is time. Now it is time to play the game where we challenge us, we challenge us selves, mm. to name the car based on limited information, and we call it Enhance. Enhance. You didn't know it was powered by a typewriter. <laughs> anyway, with the help of our handy electro brain assistant, Mr. Mistopheles, Ben will display a series of car images up on the monitor. The monitor. They will so start Michelle, off get extremely your Skype enhanced ready. or altered, if you will. The sooner one of us guesses what vehicle is being po portrayed on the display, the more points we get. <sighs> Pretty straightforward. Aaron, are you ready? I was born ready. Michelle. As ready, Craig. Let's do it, Ben. Round number one. What you got huh. for us? Well, that's a Chrysler product of some kind. I'm zero for five points. I'm going to say Dodge Ram. Mm. No. Mm, or a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Grand Cher Jeep Grand Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever shouts it loudest. No. I'm Louder. Fighting. Still not? No. No. Sebring. Chrysler. That's definitely a Chrysler head unit. Because of the color, that bluish. That greenish no, blue. You know what that is? You know what that is? What is? That is, what is a it? Chrysler minivan. Is it a town and country? Or a Grand Caravan. Grand Caravan. <laughs> <laughs> so after Aaron doesn't get it, I shout it loud. I know, right? Yeah. So it's not a Grand Caravan or a town and country? I'm afraid I'm going to have to unhance. Unhance? Un unhance. That's what we call it when we it's lower the point value. Oh. It's oh. Is it like Chrysler Pacifica? I it's think a Chrysler Pacifica. He, yeah, that's a Pacifica. <laughs> Aaron got it. Aaron got it. Five but he got point. it at the four point level. Uh, no, no, I got it. Oh, no, fine, fine. fine. I got it at the five point level. Thank you very much. You know what gave it away? What gave it away? I would like the to know. RGB inputs in the head oh. unit. So it had to be a family vehicle of some kind. Oh. Uh -huh. Tip off. Uh -huh. Zero for, the, for, for the full five points. I would have shown you this, then I would have shown you that. Oh. 
and then that. Yeah. And that. And then oh, if yeah. you don't get it by here, then why you know, are you those here? Were, those yeah, were exactly. actually attractive looking, I think. They still I are. didn't mind the Pacifica at I didn't all. either. They were very nice inside. They really price. were. And it's just a shame that nobody knew what a crossover was back then. And they were expensive, bar. too, weren't they? They were, well, they were fairly, well, and then they just no more than they are now. It well, they had that 3.5 liter V6. Mm -hmm. It vibrated like a coffee grinder. And then the four-speed automatic. So it was like... It was basically a Chrysler Aztec. It was Except a crossover based on a minivan. Yeah. yeah. Round two, Ben. Let's see what you got. And zero for five points. That's an Isuzu Axiom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, sorry. My God, and I was worried about these being too hard. I've played this game for a very long oh time. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> I may have to pull out some of my uh, Bob Hall mega hard ones then. Uh oh, no, you might have to. I don't know. All I'm, right, I'm, so I would have. I'm not good on like, five super points historical, for Aaron. like Eastern European Black Patra crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I can't do no, it. Forget it. No. Not so much. Mm. But, wow. All right, Ben. So I would have shown you, I showed you that, I would have shown you that, then that. Yep. That, and that. I've only ever seen one of these on the road, and when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, that's got to be... Uh, those have also attractive. Direct injection, ver like, ten years ago. Did they really? I think so. Could be. I'm not mistaken. It's mm. only made for two years, I understand. I've seen... There's one, actually, that runs around not far from here. Probably the same one I've seen. It was silverish, gray. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right, Ben, what do we got for round three? See if Mr. Bragman can... Should just I just shut my eyes and blow <laughs> everyone away again? <laughs> Let me know when it's safe to look. <laughs> And zero for five point. Actually, four points. Wow, what? That's... Bull roar. And zero for four points. Wait, what happened to the five point one? Bull roar. Oh, you know what happened? No. Somehow, uh, I'm missing my five point one. Oh well, Aaron gets the four point one since uh, he's going to guess it anyway. I'm sure. So we are. We should describe what we're looking at. This one I've altered it's an a bit. It's very gritty. I've he's applied a uh, pointillism filter to it. Is that so... the new Mazda Six? No, I'm afraid not. Any other guessers? It's, we see a steering wheel, some vents. I don't. I. The round vents with the. Vents. I want to say Mazda the, Protege, the but that's not right. It's not a Protege. It's not a CX-5. Would it be a Toyota Matrix? Pontiac Vibe? Nope. nope. Kia Rondo. <laughs> I don't know. Rond, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not seeing it from this one. Oh, God, who is it that does round on the sides and, and rectangle in the middle? Here in the middle. This one's hard, Ben. It's not the new C-Max, is it? No. Nope. No? Nope. Okay, I'm going to unhand. Just hands okay, yeah, I, I can't get it from this. Eh? Now we've got a mosaic effect. Two points. What the hell? On a front three-quarter crop, close crop the, of the How do we go from front. four points to two points? We're, we're dropping quickly. <laughs> we're just plummeting. Oh I'm fine. Michelle's dog wants to get in on the game. Um, 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 um. Oh, shucks almighty. Fiat Bravo? Fiat Punto. Oh, Fiat. Fiat. I think it's Fiat. A fiat. It's something French I was thinking of. Really? But that headlight shape looks Fiat. The Fiat Multipla. Can you be more specific, Craig? Oh. Panda! Nope. Punto fiat, um, Energy. Bravo, Brava. Ducati. I'm going to give it to Craig. Oh. Huh? It's, ah. it, it is the Fiat Punto. Huh. It's the Fiat uh, Punto Evo. A Bart. Ah, look at that. Yeah, never gonna get that I've one. I've never actually seen that car before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one they had on, on top here. That's neat. Smuyo Wood. So it's bigger than the 500, then. Yeah. Well, very good. Good show. Molto bene. Next round, please. Next round. You're losing, Craig. I'm losing by a lot. The Bentley concept. I'm zero four five that points. That auto show not long ago. It does look vaguely Bentley-ish, but I'm not that. It does. I don't think it is. I think it's Chinese. Is that probably. Ben's head in that, the reflection? That Chinese <laughs> uh, Rolls Royce knockoff. Knockoff? Knock is, is that a great wall? Nope. Give us the continent, Ben. I'm gonna. No, I'm gonna have to unhance. 
Give it all away. <sighs> Next. My Bach, 57. 62. That's a new Edward? Zero four four points. My Bach. No, that's, that's definitely not a My Bach. My Bach. I still think it's Chinese. <laughs> it probably is. Ugh. What? You want me to spell it out for you? <laughs> This is how, we still, wheels are very, it's spells. a rear three quarter. Does anyone in the chat spell. room have any idea? <laughs> let's, 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 let's consult the, uh... The wheel looks very BMW or Alpina. Yeah, it does, actually, but... So it must be Chinese, because it's a ripoff. Exactly. Rear I'm, three I'm quarters of dark car. Actually. The reflections look like a Chinese motor show. Can you yeah. pull, it, pull it up closer again, Ben? Yeah, and expand. There you go. <laughs> you got a pinch to zoom. And it adds. Whoa. All right, Sparky. Yeah? That's right. Gung hei fat <laughs> All right, we're going to move to the next level. Yeah, That's the Great Wall Kung Pao <laughs> General Tso Edition. General Tso Chairman Tso. Edition. Tso. Yeah. Tso. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. What the hell is that? It's Chinese. Answer Chinese car. Points. That's the Roadrunner. You're getting closer. You folks are getting closer. That's the Roadrunner from Lux the Wiley Gen. Coyote. Lux Gen. <laughs> Taiwanese. Afraid not. Um... Well, let's Aww. see. I don't know my ja my Chinese luxury brands oh, terribly well, um, mostly because luxury. there aren't many. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I... an FAW chairman. Nope. Nope. Any other guesses before we no unhance idea. again? I think this now, if you've seen this, I think it'll be the giveaway. Now, whether you can remember the name or not ah, that's is, the a, problem, yeah. is an entirely different mm -hmm. story. So here's our next image. The Beluga. Oh, it's a grill that's fat and oval points. and curving with all these vertical, shiny. It's a it's teeth. a Geely. That's what the you're, chat You're, you're getting there, Aaron. It's a Geely, isn't it? The it's Geely a... Grand Bravado Elite. It looks like it's giving birth to something, doesn't it? That's <laughs> it's like it's actually it looks like a Wurlitzer. It looks like a, a jukebox, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> or an accordion. Yeah. <laughs> It's a Chinese something or other luxury brand ripoff of the Bentley Continental. I have no clue. Or Silver Spur, actually. But I, I don't know. These the spurs that jingle jangle. I'll give you a unhands again one more time. I'll give you a look at the headlights there. It's Geely Sweet and Sour Luxuries. <laughs> <laughs> Who's saying that? Mud. Yeah. No idea. No, no point. Point. clue, really. The Mark Malone's no, says Geely L E. Geely L E. Geely L E. G E. G E. Geely Electric. You can still guess yeah, for zero that. points. <laughs> All right, now you see the whole car. Wow. I kind of wish I hadn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm regretting this. <laughs> so much going on there. What is it, Ben? All right, it is the Geely M Grand G E. <laughs> Yeah, never going to get that. I got the Geely part. <laughs> you did get the Geely part. One point for make. <laughs> wow. So there you go. Um, Scott it, and Cleveland got the Geely point first. It's oh, okay. Cuyahoga Phil, Phil in Cuyahoga County. Hid a us, says Luigi B. <laughs> Hid the us. Hid the us. All right. Egg rolls do sound good right I now. Know I'm it is time for our fifth and final round. Mm. And last and final, and no more rounds after this one round? That's the one. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> Bentley made it with a Buick Enclave and came out with a deformed child. <laughs> <laughs> it has that like was a child has been been hurt. ethanol syndrome. The ethanol syndrome. All right. Open. Time for round five. I'm zero for five points. Uh. <sighs> Hell. These are Bob Hall picks. They they are are Bob no, Hall this is no, no, no. This is the only Bob Hall pick. Oh, oh my I swear god! To you. I've never Bob. seen that thing before in my life. It's vaguely I'm retro. My butt down. It's because it was only produced for one year, and Bob said only about fifteen hundred of them. A Rover. No. British Leyland. No, it looks French. The well, the hand, the basket handle sort of rear end with the curved back glass reminds me of a '50s sort of American car. It's got suicide doors. Does it? Yes, it does. But it's the tail lamps are British. The tail lamps do look sunbeamish, don't they? British. Yeah. Pale skin. Let it, me ask you before I unhance, what year do you think? I'm just oh, curious. Relatively modern because yeah. it's very cleanly mm. styled, from what I can. But Michelle, what? Oh, do you, you know think? what? You know what? You know what? Is that a Mitsuoka? No. Because it easily could have been. 
A modern take on a Studebaker Skyhawk. Yeah, I can see that. Scott and Cl it's a Lada. All right, I'm going to unhance. Lada Grand Champion. Beep, 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 beep. Comrade edition. <laughs> All right, that is no good. Next point, step down. Yeah, we, we need like a suicide door. We need an answer for three points. No answer next. <laughs> okay. Look at that fabric. All right. Now maybe the grill will be the giveaway. No. Is this no. a Toyota Crown? Toyota Cressida. You're getting close. You're getting close, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Toyota President? Toyopet. No, this is fairly recent. Answer for one point. The Toyopet concept. What the hell was it? I'm going to look for it. Toyota Soarer? It is a Toyota, though. I'll give, I'll give you that. It yeah, is a Toyota. It is a Toyota. It's it a is Toyota not a, MD. It is not a Toyota Pet. It was, of course, influenced by the Toyota mm, Pet. This is more modern. I've never actually seen it, but I bet. Yeah. Produced between 2000 and 2001. Toyota Crown Elite, says Scott in Cleveland. Mm, nope. 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 No. The no. Toyota Pet X concept. <laughs> All right. We're going to unhance again, and yeah. this one is for 0.5 points. <laughs> the whole car, but debadged. Debadged. <laughs> wow. That's actually small. And attractive. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it's not bad looking. <laughs> it's not very ugly. <laughs> Any guesses, uh, Michelle? God, it reminds me of the Bentley Princess. No idea. It's just from the yeah. 60s. <laughs> it has a bumper. Proper bump bump. I mean, it's a modern car. Manufactured in 2000. But it has a bumper. It's not a concept. Not a concept. Over a thousand of these were made. You're kidding. Yep. It's Why? the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Have? No, sorry. All right. It's still I'm, sure you, I'm sure you won't be able to read it, but I will uh, I'll unhance to the full degree and add my badges back on. Toyota. Oh, I, uh, blow it up again. Origin? You got it. Toyota oh, Origin. Somebody has a new glass. Give Aaron zero thing. points. Toyota <laughs> Origin. So that was basically one of the first Toyota models they'd ever produced, and this was inspired by it? Uh, inspired by the Toya Pet. Mm. What is it actually built on? Uh, that Probably I don't Corolla. know. <laughs> Probably a Corolla, yeah. <laughs> that was Enhance. Wow. And so what do we, how do we do, Craig? Who's, how would the points the, shake well, out? I, uh, I carried the day, well, no, I had two points. Aaron had 10. Hey, my God. And, and I got an emoticon. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> were there any couple we could go through very quickly that were additional? I do have a, a million uh, dollar bonus point one. Ooh, all right. If you, get, all if you get this one, you, t you win everything. You You're win the grand money. champion. Yes. Okay. Let's see it. All right. Um, I don't know how to work this. It's not a point thing. I'll just, just, I'll just show it to victory, you. That's all. Okay. You that's ready? All we need, yeah. There you go. So all you get to see, what is it's it? It's a Suzuki Swift. Nope. It's supposed to be a Suzuki Swift, but I bet you it's Chinese again. No clue. <laughs> that looks familiar. Thank you for joining us this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a few more angles of it. Okay. All right. So That's not going to help, Ben. <laughs> that is supposed to be a Suzuki Swift, but, oh, but it's not. Ace? What the hell is an Ace? I think that's the dealership. Oh, okay. Is it a Describe this, Craig. It's a bustly back hatchback. That's five a cipher. Door. It's a cipher. It looks awful. Like, it's like a Chinese it's automaker. It's definitely or Chinese. It has to be Chinese. I mean, because it's supposed to be a Suzuki Swift. It's not Chinese. No? Is it it's Iranian? <laughs> it's related to the, the vehicle we saw previously, actually. It's Toyota. It's Japanese. We are a Japanese toy company. Nihonjin. 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 Japanese. Is it a K-car of some sort? Not a Chrysler K-car. You know what? You, you actually guessed it, but you didn't guess the make, Aaron. I, I had to look this up. I had to I oh. remind myself. It's a Cypher? It's a Cypher. Mm. Do you know what the make was? Shucks almighty. The will. The Will Cypher. The Will VI? That's a Toyota, isn't it? It's produced by Toyota, yes. Yeah. So. so it's a Toyota Cypher. Toyota Cypher. They actually made that thing that's not like a body kit for something? As or? I understand, they actually made that. Oh, dear God. I, I understand there's a 
big story behind the, the stores there, and they used to sell cat food and stuff, and not just cars or something like that. <laughs> it does look yeah. like something a cat barked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, all right. So no one got. Well, do we give do we give it to Aaron credit? No, because I actually got, saw the badge. He on the got back it. Of the car. He carried the day out. No, no, I saw the badge. Yeah, on the back he of the car. went. <laughs> It's no, I win. You know what? I'm, I'm, no, I'm taking it back. You won, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. All right, Aaron. Per- <laughs> well, we'll give it to both of you. But first, first, Aaron, because he won first. Level up. You ready, Aaron? Yes. We'll, we'll pre- give you the you crown. Pre- you're pre-celebrating. You haven't ready? We'll level up. Let's see if this works. Now you're Winner. You're gonna have to duck a little bit. Oh. Put your crown on. <laughs> He wears it low on his door. <laughs> and now, Michelle, since you, since you also won, go ahead, duck down. Uh, the, uh, there you go. Oh, she's the winner. <laughs> the co-winner. Look at all the smarts emanating from her, from her crown brain area, cranial area. But, you know, you know, we're all winners because the show is over. <laughs> That's and it, And you guys. had a rough day, Craggy. Yes, I know. So we thank our intern, Mark Malonzo, for his help on this game and tallying the points. Oh, we are all the way Pakistan. from Pakistan. Yeah. Wisconsin. <laughs> Pakistan, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we got to thank Michelle Naranjo with autobytel.com. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, Craigie, for coming on the program. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> You're a double winner. Oh, <laughs> double winner. <laughs> She's like, oh. I meant to put your name key up, but instead I had that queued up. So sorry about that. It's a good kind of mistake there. It's amateur hour here, Greg. Just a little bit. What was your first clue, Aaron? The broken giraffe. <laughs> so, so any big think? projects going on, Michelle, with the auto biddle? Um, with the auto biddles, let's see. Uh, we just did a fun thing at the office today. We had Ron Duran bring by a Rolls Royce and surprise everybody in the office. So that was kind of fun. It's on our Facebook page. Um, and I, I actually wrote a 12 page article last week about sitting in the Viper. 12 pages about sitting in a Viper? Very prolific. Yeah. Well, Sharon, Sharon Cardi uh-huh. gave me a challenge that I had to use onomatopoeia sepsis gatorade and gymnastics in a single article and i had 12 pictures of the inside of a viper <laughs> launch edition and so i decided to see if i could make all 12 pictures work in an article and um i wrote 12 pages on a, sitting in a car oh my god <laughs> that's an in, that's an impression it must have left an impression that's all i can say mm, depends on how well the seats are contoured <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was it was fun to do. Well, thank you, Michelle. We enjoyed thank having you. you on the show as always. Yes. And of course, Eric Bragberg from CMS International. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> close, close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Yes. CMS isn't that an energy company? I have no yeah. idea. But yeah. Aaron Bragman mm. from IHS Automotive. You work with the wonderful Rebecca Lindley. I do. She's in the New York City now. She's in she? the New York City. Yes. Yeah, the Big Apple. She will be the one going to the Paris Auto Show. Mm. Not me. <laughs> Even though I'm the one who speaks French, but whatever. How did that work out? <laughs> Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Now, do you speak French Canadian, which is supposedly a completely different dialect? No. You speak the mother tongue. The real French, yeah. Oui. Well, don't tell them that, of course, because you know, hmm. they like to think they speak real French, too. So. Oh. Do you get along well with the French when you're over there? I do. They all think I'm English. <laughs> they because there's no cons, there's no possible way that an American could speak a, a foreign language, so they all think I'm fluently. Yeah, they all think I'm either Canadian or English. Yeah, well, we have a well. great reputation around the world. Precisely. So, Burgundy or Bordeaux? Uh, I prefer actually um, Rhone Valley Cabernet. So, varietal. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But Eric Bragbert. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron Bragman. Bragman. Aaron Bragman. Yes. We thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Craig. Thank you, thank you, as always. And we got to thank Ben Sanders over in the control room. Dramatic look, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Michelle. (laughs) Awkward waving. (laughs) He's got these jitters. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. What's the jitters? I I have uh, tremors. Meth is a hell of a drug, Craig. It's cocaine. Yeah. So, anyway, Ben, we thank you for your support. And, of course, again, we thank Mark Malonzo for all of his help he gave us today. Remember, you can thank watch you, Roundabout Mark. Live. <coughs> you can watch Roundabout Live every Friday evening starting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 3.30 out on the West Coast. And don't forget to check out the rest of the Autoline family of fine programs. Mm-hmm. 
including AutoLine This Week, AutoLine Daily, and of course, AutoLine After Hours every Thursday night. Mm. Uh, if you want to get involved, you can. We're at twitter.com slash... We're at turn, twitter.com turn to the secret camera. Shh, we don't want everyone to know. On Facebook. Ben, stop talking when I'm... I'm talking. sorry. It feels so personal when you turn to the camera like it's that. It's a fireside right? chat without the warmth. Facebook.com slash roundabout show. <laughs> That's a good episode title. I'll write that down. <laughs> Facebook.com slash roundabout show. You too can get involved in the greater roundabout family of fun. And with that, we thank all of you out there for listening. And we do hope you'll join us again next week as we circle the roundabout. We'll talk to you then. What was he doing? How you back? feeling, girl? <laughs> I wouldn't do nothing. Oh. He didn't do a thing. But I like that angle. <clears throat> it's a good angle. Oh, here we go. Here's Let's hear somewhere. Here's my green windows. There's your title shot. <laughs> <laughs>